Hello Taurus. Welcome to the channel. This is Asnoitia here. For those of you who are returning, thank you so much for liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. And for those of you who are new, welcome. So this is a general love reading, and I'll be looking into the feelings and emotions of the person that you're connecting with on a romantic level, what it is that they're feeling and thinking towards you currently. The deck that I'm using is the Goddess Oracle deck by Amy Sophia Marashinsky. So some of you may have been in a relationship. This could have been with someone in the past. It could be a current relationship as well. For others of you, this could be a situationship. And for a small portion of you, this could be somebody that you've met, you have a whole lot of energy with, but no one's really speaking up. For those of you who are new, my method of reading is just slightly different. I do have the ability of channeling through my higher intuitive self to get the answers that I need. I do not channel through any spirit guides. I never have, and I have certain reasons for that. At the end of this reading, I do channel Archangels Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, and Uriel to provide you with some advice based on what comes up today. All right. We have here, first card, the strongest, play, followed by love. Then we have compassion, responsibility, beliefs, laughter, Wild Woman, Doubt, and then we have Synthesis under the bottom of the deck, the overall arching theme. I'm going to express to you what it is that your person of interest is feeling towards you currently. My dear Taurus, I miss you. And I want to have fun with you. There's certain memories that I have, certain memories I want to build. In your eyes, I see mischief. I see fun, frolic. You are someone who makes me feel alive again, wanting to thrive again. A life worth living. I want to be that person who can actually achieve certain things with you and build a future with you. I want to be that individual who feels young, vibrant, youthful. Because of you in my life, I have these feelings. There's a sense of brilliance that wasn't there before. And I have now realized that I do love you. The love that I feel for you. This is true. It is clean and it is pure. This is a sacred love. An unconditional love. Where it's just there by default. And I do feel sympathy and empathy and compassion for you, for the situation that you're in now, for the situation that I put you in. Yes, I do feel for you. And sometimes I even feel pity for you. Why? Why would you even want to be with somebody like me? Why? Have I not hurt you enough? I do not deserve you. I don't know what you ever saw in me. But there's a part of me that now realizes that the things that I have done, they have been very wrong. There's a sense of responsibility. I want to be more responsible I want to be that person who can handle things and 
take on these burdens. Take them on my shoulders and be able to be responsible for the things that I've done in the past and for the things that may occur in the future. I want to be that person who shows that sense of responsibility. And I also know that in this connection, you and I, the way we have thought of where this connection is headed, that is something different. That is something unique. I thought it was headed in one direction and you had a completely different idea. Our opinions are so different. Our thoughts, our ideas, they are so different. I now know that in this connection with you, there is this understanding, certain things that I have forgotten, certain things I never really thought about. But I realize now that you have your own differences because of the way you were born and brought up throughout your adulthood, and now I'm different. But we do not see eye to eye, and we are not on the same page. We are different. You plan things differently. You think of things differently. And so do I. A part of me feels that you are my best friend. You are my confidant. And because of this, I know that no matter where I go, no matter what I do, a part of you will always be with me and a part of me, hopefully, remains with you. You are that one person that knows me in my life. You know what makes my heart happy. You know what makes me tick. You know what makes me laugh. Only a best friend could know that, because I feel that you are my best friend. I also feel that in this connection, there is a sense of deceit, deception, even cheating. Certain things that have happened that I never really told you about, I've kept certain things from you, and it has led to deception, deceit, suspicion. There are certain things that I know, and yes, I have kept them from you. What I have felt, it is different. I feel there are many things to tell you. But I have seen so much and I have learned so much that sometimes I try to not tell you the full truth. But if I deny you the truth, if I deny you the full story, if I only tell you a certain part of it, does that mean that I'm lying to you? Does that mean that I have not been so truthful? I understand the things that I have said and done and now... There is a lack of trust in me. You don't trust me. I understand that. And I do doubt. I doubt that anything in this connection, I doubt that it'll work out. Because of the fact that I have lied. I have not told the truth. This doubt that exists now, it's a feeling of not knowing and not having that sense of a sense of trust and faith in a connection. There is a lack of that now. And a part of me feels that it's because I was never truly responsible and I was never truly open and honest with you. I hid things from you and I sometimes would try to twist things. Overall, the feeling that I have in this connection 
I understand that there have been things that have happened in the past. So many things that truly have happened. But I have kept deep down inside of my heart. I never truly shared them with anybody. I never told anybody what I feel, how I feel, why I feel the way that I do. There's darkness. And in this darkness, there are shadows. And I have hidden some of my truths, some of my stories, things that I have felt guilty for. I've hidden them in the depths and the shadows of this forest, not wanting anybody to see it. However, now things are changed. Now I feel the need to open up and to bring all of this information out and to share with you the things that I've held inside of my heart for so long because I want to be more open with you and honest. For now, all I know is that in this lifetime, I met you and I feel that you truly are the one best friend that I always needed. And I love you for that. I do love you. All right. Taurus. Interesting. You have a couple of things here that are a bit on the dark side. Yes, this person wants to take responsibility, which is wonderful. That's great. But we also have here the beliefs card. Now, beliefs is huge. But the type of context that I see this in, the storyline, I'm seeing that the belief card here, it may definitely talk about other people, other parties that are causing problems in this connection. Sure, but it also talks about how your person of interest beliefs were very different from your own. The way they thought about how this connection was is not how you viewed it. They may have viewed it because they are stuck between the friendship card Laughter and play. For me, I interpret these two cards, laughter and play, as friendship cards. The fact that beliefs is in between both of them, that indicates to me that their belief was that, you know what, we're just really, really good friends. This could literally have been a casual connection, friends with benefits connection. Maybe you guys were together for many years. However, their opinion, their point of view, the way they thought about this connection. Do they love you? Yes, they do. Are they in love with you in that way? It's a struggle. I don't see that here, at least with these cards. But what I do see is the absolute feeling of love for friendship, love for friendship. Yes, I do see that here. So you're dealing with somebody here where you may have thought, and they may be, they may be the love of your life. They may possibly be. However, maybe in the beginning they thought that too. But right now, as of right now, it does appear that your person of interest has more of friendship feelings. And it's still okay. It's better to have feelings of friendship than to have no feelings at all. So it's a good thing. At the very least, you're in their, in their good books. Some of you might not even want to be. Some of you are really upset at this person and you don't even want to have anything to do with them, which also makes me a bit concerned. Why, if you are not interested in the person, why are you still watching videos? Why? It's because you haven't healed. Okay. And there's no harm in watching videos. There's no harm in trying to heal yourself however you can, whether it is reading a book, listening to videos, whether it is talking to a friend. Healing is key. So many people sometimes get upset and they're like, no, I'm done not seeing this person again. Or why are you bringing up this person again? It's simply because that person is still in your energy. And it is very important to get rid of that person from your energy, not the person itself, but the energy. And that can only happen by realization and understanding that you need to move on. For some of you, this is a situation that you never really thought 
uh, would turn into what it is now, unfortunately. And your person of interest was not very truthful either. So let me know about it. What happened? Do let me know in the comments below because this is a very unique reading right now. There's a few like aspects here. Like This person does want to be responsible. They do want to take care of you in a way. They want that sense of beliefs to go away where there's issues in between the both of you. But you know what happens? Things change. People change. Things don't always remain the same. At the very least, you have here um, friendship, which means with the love, that could bloom and blossom into something else. If it was like that before and it was demolished, don't worry. It still exists. It can still come up. That's the great thing about love. You can fall in and out, in and out of love all the time. <laughs> it's not right. But at the end of the day, if they come back, right? That does mean that there's love. It's not healthy. Falling in and out of love is not healthy. But it still shows you that there is love. Third party situation, people. Not good. Some of you might be in a third party situation here. Your person of interest was not truly the most trustworthy individual when it came to other people and them and partying or even associating with other individuals. Okay, so this deck I like to read in the reverse. And the reason why I like to see this deck, I go a little bit into the past to have a look at what happened in the first place where things were great. They were growing great. And all of a sudden, boom, it just went right downhill. So what was it that happened? This is for those of you that may never have received any closure and you needed closure. You never perhaps even knew what was on this person's mind. Perhaps they ghosted you, they faded, and now it's once a week, once a month, they message you. Here we have the Three of Cups. And I do read these in the reverse. The Three of Cups here, it does talk about how there's a sense of overindulgence and procrastination. It talks about how it's time to get back to work. So overindulgence and procrastination, a celebration involving females, women. This is talking about even a possibly a wedding feast or a feast. This talks about overindulgence. It could be dr um, drinking too. Overindulgence, anything that is overindulgence is not good. I've said that word so many times right now, sorry. Uh, it's just, it's too much. Something that they were doing was too much, but also they were procrastinating. So why does somebody overindulge? They're overindulging because they're procrastinating. So this person may have been doing certain things that were very unhealthy behind the scenes, not telling you. And whatever they were doing, it was above and beyond what the normal level of indulgence would be. It was overindulgence. And what else were they doing? They were procrastinating. They did not want to have that sense of, oh, responsibility. Yeah, you had that, didn't you? Right there. Responsibility. They did not want to have that sense of responsibility. And that's why they're procrastinating. Person's got to grow up sometime, right? We all have to grow up, right? This person was not wanting to do that. They were very comfortable where they were, how they were. And that was the end all be all. That's not the way life runs. That's not life. Here we have wisdom. An unwillingness to learn. A sense of superficiality. Intimidated by your intelligence and your education. Feeling a lack and limitations of knowledge and understanding. So here you're dealing with somebody that did not feel enlightened, did not feel educated, and did not feel that they had the knowledge or the wisdom. So this is really interesting. You're dealing with somebody here who was procrastinating and also was not wise. Oh my goodness, guys, that is, I'm sorry, but for some of you, that is a terrible choice. Yeah, frowns, I see, I hear. Not good. Uh, some of you, of course, love is blind, right? And that's universal. I understand that. But you also have a little bit of logic there, right? It's not always about the looks. It's not always about the money. It's not always about just having fun, right? You got to look at long term here. If you want old fashioned love, you got to do it the old fashioned way. 
That's just the way it is. Here, we have a situation where the type of person you thought they may have been somebody that you thought was wise, okay? Somebody that you thought that was very fun. The issue now is that this turned out to be in a very like negative way, it just turned out so wrong because we have somebody here who's overindulging, having fun, not trying to do what it takes to get the job done, to move forward in this connection, not happening. Here we have somebody who is truly procrastinating. Why? Because of fear and not wanting to take responsibility. And why did they not think responsibility is important? Because they were not wise. They actually felt intimidated by you at some point in time in life. They felt intimidated either through your education or through your experience or through your age, whatever it was, they did not feel good enough. And sometimes people act and when they procrastinate, we think that they know it all and that they will be able to handle it. And in the meantime, they're simply avoiding it because they know they can't handle it. But you don't know that. You think that they can. And the impression that they've made on you is that, yep, I can handle it, but I'm just not going to do it yet. This is something that happened in this connection where you thought you could depend on this person. They were unreliable, inconsistent. I'm hearing the word, seeing the word. Um, we also have here that lack of wisdom. So your person could truly have been immature or inexperienced, but I definitely see they did not have wisdom or integrity. I'm seeing the word, a lack of integrity. All right. So that's something that happened. You're dealing with somebody that personally, me, I wouldn't be able to handle somebody like that. As you get older, you kind of lose patience for people too. Yes, you get desperate too. That happens too. Happens to men and women. That's normal. But you have to be very careful who you're getting involved with. Here we're dealing with somebody who truly has not seen that side of the heart, that side of the relationship. And that's where that issue comes in from with that wisdom. There could have been a lot of learning opportunities there, but there was none. Because they themselves didn't want to get involved in that. Why? Because, oh, I know everything. That's what they think. That's what they're showing you. I know everything. But in the meantime, they weren't doing anything because they were procrastinating. Why? Because they truly did not know everything. All right. Oh my goodness, this is a very different individual. <laughs> um, wow. Okay. So I have here the Beginner's Tarot. And here I'd like to have a look at... Huh... Any sort of plans, actions, intentions that may exist in this person's mind. <laughs> I'm not even going to say anything. Oh my god. What is happening? Oh, good lord. Your person of interest is really heartbroken. This is so sad. And we still have somebody who's immature here. Still, they haven't grown up. Um, all right. Holy moly, guys. Um, you have here one, two, three, four cards, absolutely dark and dreary. Oh my goodness. Three of swords. Heartbreak, sorrow, guilt, sadness over separation. The feeling of feeling that sense of melancholy and sadness, feeling victimized even. Your person of interest has had a sharp pain in the heart. And they are longing to be with you at some point in time. They want to do this, but they feel betrayed. They feel hurt. This is strange because it's them, which is probably why I saw the word victimized in my mind's eye right now. They are definitely heartbroken, for sure. Uh, this is the three of swords. You just had the three of cups. Could be, for a small portion of you, a third party situation. Three people are involved, or maybe even four. With the Three of Swords, this does talk about how this person is truly very, very deeply wounded. And this is because they feel that the both of you should have been together, you could have been together, but now there's a sense of separation between. And that just breaks their heart. 
It truly does. We also have here the Ten of Swords. Yes, your person of interest may have left for a while, thinking that the grass was greener on the other side. It turned out to be just fake plastic. Not real, not the real deal. You're the real deal. And so they came crawling back. Now the problem is, by the time they came, the world stabbed them in the back. Ten swords. Gone down. Boom. They have fallen face, uh, face flat on the ground. And now they are unable to get up. Because firstly, they feel very embarrassed, I'm seeing. They don't know how to get up. Because they don't even know what to do after this. You see, for them, this was like their grand finale. It was the end. But now they realize, no, this is just the beginning. And now they don't know how to start. So what are they doing? Two of Swords. They're going to be ignoring and denying in the meantime, right? Procrastination. Yeah, let's just let's just forget about all this. No, it's this is this what this person's feeling. Like they don't want to handle or deal with the situation. They don't want to put any effort into it because it is uncomfortable. This person likes to do things that they're comfortable with and they feel very uncomfortable and so they're going to just deny it. They have this this cross um this cross of the two um swords so it's crossing their chest. They don't even want their heart involved with this anymore. They want to take a step back and just denying that sense of responsibility. I don't want to deal with this right now because I can't think straight and I want to co focus on other things. This is what this person is feeling. It's not as if they are not worried about it. It's not that they don't care. They do because they're absolutely brokenhearted. It's because they want a mental and emotional pause. This is a pause for them. And eventually, there's going to be a play, which is the go, and that go is the fool. There is going to be, after the pause button, there's going to be a play. And then you have the play, and this is exactly where the fool card comes in. Your person, yes, is... I don't want to say it, your person's a fool, but person's a fool in love. They want to be in your life in a very romantic way. This card is wonderful. It does have all of the intentions that are so important. Having that sense of new feeling and excitement. This person wants to take a leap of faith and be with you. However, the downside I've seen of this card is the fact that you're dealing with somebody who is very immature. Somebody who has not thought about the entire situation. Somebody who takes action first and thinks later. That is the problem with this card. That is something that your person has in terms of their personality. And that's something you're going to have to see. How can this move? And how can this change for, move forward? Or how can this change? Clearly, with this card, it does show me that your person of interest is quite immature right now. They are not very wise. Also, they're very impulsive, compulsive, and aggressive in a way when they make any decisions. They're very hasty. Hasty decision-making. But do they want to be with you? Are they going to take a leap of faith? Yes, they are. Yeah. It's just like a ray of sunshine and they just feel brand new. They feel young, vibrant, youthful, and they're just going to jump right towards you. They're going to be like, okay, this is what I want to do. Let's do this. I do see this person having that sort of personality. However, what I'm seeing is they have not healed. They have not healed. They have not gone through a certain process that needs to be felt, that needs to be experienced. They have not done that. Because when this happens, if one day crap hits the fan and it gets really bad in the connection, they're so immature that they're just going to take a step back and then they'll do this to you. Two of swords, denying, nope, I'm not talking, not seeing anything, not talking to anybody. So you're dealing with somebody here who knows what they want. They want you. But the way that they want you is not exactly the healthiest way because they're not really trying to heal. They're just trying to move forward in the connection. What they need to do is heal. And that happens by you giving them time 
and that space to think and to keep their distance from you. Here we have also the Four of Cups, the overall arching theme. They are very bored, but extremely depressed. They are seeing these three, right? Again, three. Could be, like I said, third party. Now, third party doesn't have to be another person. It could be another situation. Maybe they are far away, or maybe they're taking care of a sick loved one. Maybe they have to work in a different area, and they can't give you that time. Maybe they're taking care of kids because they have... um custody of the children. And so they somebody just divorced. They're having custody of the children. Every weekend they're supposed to be with their kids. So no, you don't get priority. It could be that. It could be a bunch of things. But at the end of the day, what's important with this card is that it does show me that they are not taking certain opportunities that are coming to them. There's certain things that they could have done, certain things that they could have felt even, but they deny themselves from certain comforts. And they want to see where this connection is going. They want to see if it heads anywhere else. But they also want to feel bad for the sake of feeling bad. As strange as that sounds. There are opportunities coming to this person, but they are not taking them. Instead, they are remembering that it would have been nice if I could have reconciled with this person, but no, I don't know if it's going to work out. Three, reconciliation. It's right there. It's right there, but they're denying it. And it's because they don't feel deep on the inside. They don't feel healthy enough emotionally to actually be able to handle this. So it's almost as if whatever this person wants, they're trying to get it. They're trying to jump over certain things. But whatever they're jumping over, I'm seeing ice on water. This person is running on ice. The water below is very, very dark. And they're running on that ice. And as soon as they run on that ice going forward, it's breaking right behind them. It's breaking. How long will they be able to make it on that ice and keep running? Because eventually the crack may go just before them and it may separate before they even reach that part of the ice. It could separate and then boom, they're right in the water. What I'm seeing right now is this person is trying to be in the connection with you the way they have always been by not changing their lifestyle, by not changing who they are. And that is not going to work. That is what I'm seeing. The only way, Crosswatcher, this is going to work, is if you take a step back, heal, understand what happened, why you did the things that you did, have a good reason for it, and then you know, okay, that was just wrong. I'm a totally different person now. It's healing. You need that strength. You need that courage and that wisdom. But that only happens after you take that time out. It's not going to happen rush, boom, right one after the other, and boom, I'm just, I'm back. No. Because if push comes to shove, if something really bad happens, it'll just go back to the way things were before. Taurus, don't let this person lead the connection. You be the lead in this connection because clearly they need your guidance. All right. I have here Archangel answer card. Just going to do a quick prayer. All right, there you have it, folks. Ask for help from others. So these messages are brought to you by Archangels Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, and Uriel. Ask for help from others followed by remain positive. Then we have let go. After that, we have trust. It's up to you. So we have two categories of groups here. Um, You have here some people that may wish want to, may, wow, may, they may wish that they want to remain with this person. Now, you have quite a few things going on here. This is really like a huge message. 
So these messages are brought to you by Archangels Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, and Uriel. If I did not mention that, sorry. If I did, please forgive me. Um, they're saying here, ask for help from others. So this is actually other people, individuals. Okay. They are telling here you here to remain positive. Keep that positive energy flowing because the more positive you are, the more positive energy you yourself will attract. Let go. And that is exactly what I was telling you right now. Because this person is literally, they're so stuck. You need to give them that breathing space, okay? And in the meantime, you don't wait for them. You don't think about them. You focus on yourself. You do things that perhaps you have a talent that you haven't truly explored, right? Maybe you had something that you wanted to finish. You never get time for it. When you're a couple, you're pretty busy. And if you have more than just a couple, if you have like pets or kids or a home to take care of, bills to pay together, you get busy. Use this time while you can. It's a good time. We also have here trust in the divine. So there is a divine plan here that's taking place. Do trust in it. And it's up to you. Here, the reading splits into two people, two categories, okay? Some people here don't want to be with this person. Some people do want to be with this person. For those of you that don't, it's up to you. It's a yes in terms of you finding somebody else who is a spiritually based romantic connection because there's someone better for you in the coming future, especially after you let go and you start to consult with some people. They're going to start to make you feel better and you will realize certain things that you were doing that you perhaps you never really did before and you never realized that you were doing these things. But it's going to be an enlightening sort of experience for you. You do have somebody coming into your life where there's someone better who is going to be a spiritually based romantic connection. This could be a twin flame, soulmate, karmic partner, maybe even more. But these are the top three that I've seen that are the strongest connections. For those of you that do want to be with this person, here it is still important for you to talk to others about the connection, about how you feel. And of course, it is up to you because yes, in this connection, the situation that has occurred, you are still connected with this person. Most likely, this is 100% of the time I've seen, you do have a connection with this individual. You could be right now soulmates, twin flame, karmic partner. This is something that is very normal, very common. What isn't common is that when we're in these connections sometimes, when we let go, certain things do get better. Right now, with the way these are actually set out, it does appear that something is going to get better in this connection. So if you think this is the end all be all, the way it was always going to be, and it's always going to be the same, it's never going to change. Don't think that because it is going to change because they have here, there is something better that's going to happen in this connection in the coming future. Now, this is a general love reading. It's not personal, but hopefully this will come through and true for some of you. If the majority of the reading is on point, if you feel that it's resonating with you, then this should also be helpful. For some of you, yes, it's going to work out. For some of you, you're just literally going to find somebody else. And that's perfectly fine. Either way, I see that there's big positive changes and that you're going to be happy about it. Taurus, that is your reading. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let me know in the comments below if any of this has resonated. I also wanted to just quickly let you know, for those of you who are interested in past life readings, I do past life readings. The majority of the time it's past life. It's just maybe a few readings that may be uh, future life where you haven't actually um, met each other yet, but this is going to be like 100, 200 years from now, that type of a reading. Those are very rare. It's like 4% of my readings are like that. But the rest of them are all past lives. So if you want that sense of closure, if you want to know why your person does the things that they do, it's all based on the past life. So hopefully that would provide some clarity for some of you. For others of you, I, I do have openings for love readings right now. And for those of you that want to get rid of any sort of negative energy, I do have the Holy Light Package, which is a self-help guide. And I also have the Chakra Checkup Package where I have the ability to actually look remotely 
I can do this. Uh, with the help of my angel guide and my higher intuitive self, I'm able to see in your home, which is kind of creepy, <laughs> what you have in terms of negative energies, what you have, how many you have, and around your aura, as well as inside of your body, which is your chakra centers. And once I know that, once I know those numbers, I give you a personalized reading to tell you how you can get rid of these things. Hopefully that will provide you with some uh, clarity and some ways to move forward in terms of manifestation, because it's very important to get rid of the negative energies in order to bring in positive energy. All right. You all take care, stay safe, and I will see you guys again. Thank you so much for tuning in. Take care. Bye now.